In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses, people who have testif testified to the faith through the power of the intellect that you have given them as your wonderful gift, as well as people who have testified to the faith by the shedding of, your, of their blood, your martyrs. May we be inspired by their lives, by their witness, by their writings, that we may faithfully serve you with all of our hearts and grow ever closer to you and lead others to the knowledge of the truth. We ask all things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today I want to spend some time reflecting on one of the things that I've been doing and one of the things I've been doing is going back and reading some of the writings of the Church Fathers. In the past I've read many of the Church Fathers but at the same time there have been numerous Church Fathers that I've only read part of their works, um, just small fractions or just basically came across them in introductory books to their thought, but never spent the time to read their actual writings. So I've been spending some time wanting to go back and read some of the earliest writings in Christianity. So I started out reading uh, the uh, patristic St. Clement of Alexandria. Clement is, uh, in one sense, an interesting figure because Clement is wanting to uh, provide a defense of the Christian uh, belief system in and against Greek religion, Greek philosophy. Clement, as uh, time goes on uh, in his writings, uh, continues to speak about, in one sense, that uh, the Greek philosophers such as Plato and Socrates were leading the way so that the Greeks could accept the good news of Jesus Christ. They're paving the way for the gospel message, even though they did not reach, in one sense, the fullness of the truth. Uh, they were leading the way so that there could be fertile soil. So as I'm going out and uh, uh, reading these works, particularly, like I said right now, Clement, I'm seeing what Clement is trying to do. Clement recognizes that in his society there are the pagans who are following their pagan religions and on how far away the pagan religion is from Christianity. And so he's wanting to provide a defense of Christian belief uh, using philosophical methods, recognizing that the um, philosophical conceptions of Plato, of Socrates, were in one sense trying to get rid of the errors that are found in pagan religion. That you have these basic gods who are immoral and people are using the example of these gods as a, a method to uh, provide defense for their own immor immor immoral act, actions. And so Clement is basically saying this is wrong. And he, as he's looking at his culture, he's seeing that there are very good things in the culture. The highest uh, philosophical ideals are compatible with Christianity. But at the same time, there are other aspects within the culture that um, do not align with the Christian message, and these have to be overcome. So as I'm reading uh, his work on uh, his, his writings uh, to the Greeks, the exhortation to the Greeks, Clement is speaking in one sense uh, to the people first, everything that is wrong uh, with, with their Greek religion. And as he's pointing out the errors, um, in one sense, Clement's trying to do this to pave the way for the Christian message. Before there's the fertile soil in order uh, to have that abundant harvest, the soil must first be remedied. Uh, those stones taken away, 
everything that's going to interfere with having that abundant harvest needs to be gotten rid of and the soil amended so that the Christian message has a soil in order to take root and provide that abundant harvest that Jesus wants. So Clement is looking at the errors, but then as time goes on, Clement's going to go and say, but yes, the highest ideals of our culture are in line with the Christian message, and this is how. So Clement, in one sense, recognizes he has a twofold mission, getting rid of the errors, but then affirming the basic truths of what the Christian message are, and on how they happen to also coincide with the highest ideals of their society, of their culture. Years ago, I remember reading Niebuhr's work, Christ and Culture, and that's such a powerful work that uh, he recognizes that sometimes Christ and culture are one and the same, that Christ affirms what's happening in culture. And I think every culture, no matter how wicked, evil, far alienated away from God, there's always elements, there's always those seeds of the truth there that have to be brought out and in one sense rediscovered and shown how these are compatible with Christianity. But every culture also has things that separate them from God. Uh, cultures have sometimes high ideals, but don't live up to those ideals. So we need people, we need the prophets, we need thinkers like Clement who come along and say, this is wrong and this is why. And this is precluding us from fully accepting the good news, the Christian message, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So uh, we need people in the church today like Clement who affirm the good, but also can denounce the bad and do it in such a way, not as to alienate people, but to draw people to reflect on what Christianity truly is. Christianity, in one sense, is a very simple message, but as you dive deeper into it, you recognize there's a lot of intellectual content that's available to provide a defense, a, rational, a rationalistic account of the faith. But at the same time, the faith is always greater than those accounts themselves. So Clement provides us an example, I believe, of Christianity, what we need today. We're going to be uh, soon going into New Year's. And New Year's is a time that many of us make resolutions. And as we make these resolutions, a lot of times we're looking at those external things to us. Oh, you know, I need to lose 30 pounds, so I'm going to go to the gym, or I'm going to take better care of myself this year. I'm going to eat healthier. And, and so there's a lot of, a lot of times, some self-love in our New Year's resolution. But I think a greater challenge is how are we going to grow spiritually this year, grow in our faith, grow in our knowledge and love of God, of Jesus, experience the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and share this life-saving message with other people. I recently, um, kind of as part of my own New Year's resolution, have purchased a number of books of the Church Fathers that I want to spend time reading this year and get to know their own um, their own way of witnessing to the faith. That if you look at the letter to the Hebrews, the author speaks about we're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. And when we go back and read the earliest uh, writings of Christianity, we are hearing stories of people who bravely defended the faith, uh, who gave their life for the faith. And their lives are, should impact our own lives. Their writings should impact our own theology because they had true friendship with God. They're friends with God. They're there in heaven praying and interceding on our behalf. And where they have gone, we hope to follow in their footsteps. So we need to be reading uh, the writings of the earliest church fathers and take their writings seriously into heart because they were ultimately disciples. They were formed 
by that love that Jesus had for them and has for us, they can help us to become better disciples. And that's what Christianity is about. None of us are perfect. None of us have gotten the fullness of the faith. And that's why we constantly have to be returning to the Word of God, to the sacraments, to the, to the basic truths of our faith, because there's always more to be found, more to be discovered, more to be shared, and more to form us into being better humans. So may the writings, the teachings of the Holy Fathers and Mothers of the Church continue to be with us and guide us, particularly as we begin a new year. Help us to be better Christians, better disciples, to really understand the love that God has for us, to be shaped by this love, and to share this love with one another. May God bless us and keep us, and may you have a blessed and safe 2024.